I made a deal with Cedar that I would not start um, working on the Cummins truck that I bought for Rhett until this truck was gone. This 82 one ton uh, was gone. So I threw them on the local um, internet last night and it didn't take long. I priced them accordingly. It didn't take long before they were, uh, before I had an offer. The guy's going to be here this afternoon. The problem is I have to, I have to take the rear axle out of the one ton single rear wheel to swap into the dually. But I cannot move that truck if I don't have some sort of a rear axle in it. And then I also have to get Rhett's, um, the 77 at least running. And I think it just needs to jump. The battery's not so good in it. So, as usual, got lots to do and not enough time to do it. And then on top of that, we have a winter storm advisory right now for this evening. So there's some sort of storm that's coming in that's supposed to lay down some snow. So here we go. At a fairly young age, I learned that hard work often translated to a little extra money in my back pocket. Therefore, I almost always had some sort of a job, but I also learned how to wheel and deal. As a kid, I never had a brand new bike. but I wanted to do what the other kids in the neighborhood were doing, like building jumps or riding at the BMX track. So I wheeled and dealed until I had a decent little BMX bike. As I took an interest in cars, I started to do the same things. 
I oftentimes would buy something that nobody wanted, put some effort into it, make it into something that somebody was willing to pay more for, and then wash, rinse, and repeat. All right, I've been uh, gone all afternoon. I just got home and Cedar informed me that the water tanks are completely empty. Um, we've had a couple of storms. We obviously haven't had enough sun and I wasn't paying attention to the water tank level indicator. So now I get to go down and top off the generator with fuel and uh, start the generator up, flip a couple of switches. It's nothing major other than the fact that it's pitch black outside. It's probably eight degrees. And uh, I, sh I should have just been watching a little bit closer to uh, so that something like this doesn't happen. I never had an interest in being a used car dealer. I had an interest in taking something average and trying to make it above average. I loved finding some old oddball vehicle that didn't have a whole lot of value. And then I would put enough effort into it to where I could easily get double my money out of it. I've never really been one to be loyal to the project, meaning I never hung on to anything. And most of the time when the project was about 95% finished, the ADD would kick in. I would sell it and move on to something else. If I look back on the patterns in my life, it wasn't just with cars. This also happened with real estate. It's just in my bones, I suppose. It's just who I am. I love all things mechanical, but I also like taking mechanical things and improving them. This is probably why doing what we've done over the last five years has been so satisfying for me. This has to be one of the main reasons why I no longer find myself on the local real estate pages looking for the next project.
as far as we've come here at Red Poppy Ranch, I'm nowhere near 95% done. In my mind, I don't even know if I've crossed the halfway mark. Cedar figured out along the way that me having an old car or truck in the garage that I would tinker on when I would get home from work was definitely cheaper than the therapy that I probably needed. So she would typically sit back and observe, rein me in and help me focus if that was needed until the project was close enough to being done that we could at least get our money out of it. This also goes back to the idea that I'm always trying to improve our position in whatever way I can. If it's getting a better plow truck, getting a better four-wheeler, getting a better tractor, getting a better excavator, or paying off old debts, All of these things are bettering our position. It just feels good to take something that somebody wouldn't bother with and make it into something that somebody wants. Many years back, I had a plumbing client of mine that owed me a little bit of money, and rather than paying me that money, they traded me a 1965 Chevy C10 long bed two-wheel drive pickup truck I took that truck, made it into a short bed, put full air suspension on that truck, converted it from a small back window to a big window, put a patina type paint job on it, and I ended up having less than maybe $1,500 tied up in the truck. I threw it on the internet, put it up for sale. I received an email that required Google Translate for me to figure out what was going on. And I learned that someone in Sweden had an interest in my 1965 C10. I assumed the email was a scam. The next day I got a phone call from a hot rod shop in Southern California that informed me that they would act as the middleman, purchase the vehicle, and help get that truck shipped back to Sweden. All right, I got the other truck done um, and it's starting to snow, so it's perfect timing. I'm worn out, I don't, I don't really wanna keep doing this, but I'm gonna keep doing it because I'm dirty and I just, just as soon get it done uh, while I'm dirty. And uh, 
so if all goes well, I just got to throw some bolts in, hook a brake line up, and uh, we're good to go. About a week later, I received the money for that truck, and the truck was boxed up in a shipping container and sent to Sweden, where I'm assuming that truck still is. There was a time when I was already a journeyman plumber when Cedar and I were talking about moving to Cheyenne, Wyoming so I could go to one of the better auto technical schools in the country and learn how to do paint and body work in a way that might put me in the hot rod scene. At that time, we already had three kids and we decided it just wasn't right. But the fact remains, I'm a car guy. I like old cars and I probably always will. I especially love old square body Chevys. As I've said in the past, the very first square body Chevy was a 1977 K10 four-wheel drive short bed that I bought right before Cedar and I got married. And a couple of years later, I sold to pay off her wedding ring. I've owned about 20 of them since then. Okay, I worked late last night on the crew cab. Um to get the axle done. The only thing I have left on the rear axle is to get a couple of emergency brake cables. Uh, but the drive line's hooked up, brake line's hooked up. I need to bleed, bleed the brakes. I put the dually tires back on it just because I need to be able to move it around, but it is in fact not a dual rear axle. Uh, the next step is the front axle. I've got to change the front hubs uh, and that will narrow it just a little bit. And then I've already got my tires coming. I'm gonna run, run another set of those um, those BFG KM3s, those are the best tires that we have found for the uh, all different conditions that we have up here. But then it's lift and then it's finding some rims. But as much as I really like this truck, uh, I'm gonna take my time on the drivetrain for this thing, meaning I'm gonna build a Cummins for it that is a pretty uh, significant motor. I'm gonna build probably something in the 500 horsepower range and it might take me a little while to do that, to find the right uh, donor project to get the drivetrain from. I'm gonna put an automatic in it as well if Cedar's gonna drive this. But in the meantime, by the way, once the, uh, the uh, front hub conversion's done, once the uh, flatbed is on it, uh, we're gonna start driving it. It's got a motor, the motor's got 11,000 miles on it. The motors and transmission are, are almost brand new. So we're gonna start using this even before we uh, do the Cummins swap on it. So. Uh, we got about four, maybe five inches of snow last night. We got just enough snow that I need to go run the snow plow, but I forget how much I like this truck. This truck is a peach. Uh, you don't find them like this rust-free too often in this area. So I think we're going to, we're going to do this one upright. Okay. Fireside chat in front of the fire. Fireside chat minus the fire. Minus the fire. <laughs> it's probably 18 degrees out here. Um, so so it's been crazy it. the last, go ahead. I was say, we just call it chat. In a, in a pretend fire. <laughs> okay, the last few days have been a bit crazy. Um, getting the, we're trying to get the trucks out of here that don't have any future here, right? The We sold the 77, I sold that this morning, that truck's gone. We thought, we thought that was the truck though. You said no future, yeah. but we yeah, were I, hoping it was gonna work out and with title issues, it just didn't work out. Yeah, and thank goodness it didn't work out because that uh, Dodge truck coming along was a much better truck to, to More reliable. spend some money on. Yeah. Um, but that being said, the Crew Cab Dually, after working on that for a couple of days, it's a 1987 K30 factory four x four truck. It was a Silverado, which means it's got electric everything. And it's super low miles. And I paid less than four grand for that truck. I sold that hydraulic bed off the back of the truck and that knocked a chunk out of it. Um, 
I swapped that single rear wheel axle into the back of it. So now it's no longer a dually in the rear. I still have to finish converting the Dana 60 up front. I think I have to do the inner hubs, possibly the rotors, um, possibly the calipers. I, I'm not sure. I've got some of those port parts coming. Um, but it's a peach of a truck. Um, the more I look underneath it, it's just got no miles. It's got no wear and tear. So we're going to lift it, wheels, tires, do a flatbed on it and drive it. And then when I find the right drivetrain, which will be a, a, a 12 valve Cummins, but I want to find a motor that's got low miles that hasn't been uh, used and abused. And then I'll probably take that motor and, and even have somebody go through it. Um, I want to really uh, put some effort into that truck and uh, and then make it make it part of the fleet while you give me the stink eye. Because most of that language, some I understand, some I have to decipher. <laughs> this is this will be the third come and swap I've done in a square body. Um, when, what, you, when you say we, it makes me like I get some of the credit for all the work that you're doing. Meaning we are going to drive it. Meaning you'll drive the truck. Okay. And so, so you get to do all the work and I just get to supervise. Sure. And, That's and fine. And enjoy the fruits of your labor. Sure. Is that... <laughs> um, but I need to build it in a way where it's going to be obviously dependable and, um, I'll end up putting an automatic transmission in it because, um, as much as I like the NV, NV4500, uh, five speed transmissions, it's not fun when you've got, when you're a wife and you've got kids in the back seat and whatever. So anyway, I'm looking forward to playing around with that truck. We still have the 82 one ton sitting over here that I swapped the rear axles out of. I've got it listed locally for, for sale. Hopefully somebody will find a need for that thing. But the main topic of today's <laughs> chat is... Not trucks. Excuse me. <laughs> is our satellite, satellite internet and... The good things about it and the bad things about it. Tell me the good right. things about satellite internet. The fact that we live in the middle of nowhere and that we can actually have internet, that's a good thing. Okay. That's it. And let's that's see. That's it. It's definitely not the price that we pay every month for it. 160 and bucks a month plus tax. It's actually like, yeah, almost 170 after tax, okay. which is a lot. It's for... the middle of, there's three options with Viasat. There's only two companies that offer satellite internet. Hughes and Viasat, and that's in our area. And they're both horrible. They're both absolutely horrible. Even if we paid for the premium package, it would not be much better. Uh, we considered paying $200 a month to be able to upload a video and to be able to have a little bit more bandwidth. And the uh, end result is, thank goodness, uh, Starlink is soon to be in our neck of the woods. We, we've been on a waiting list for Starlink. and um, but, but we've been on this, we've been for the last year and a half, We've been using uh, Viasat, and uh, we just kind of have learned to deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, basically, one person's on, if somebody's on YouTube or if somebody's streaming something, um, nobody else can be on the internet. And uh, we're really, really looking forward to seeing how much better. Phone calls, same thing with phone calls. Um, we use all Wi-Fi calling. And so it's, uh, number one, again, like Cedar said, to live where we live, down in the middle, out in the middle of nowhere, down in, down between a couple of mountains, um, that, that's the, in and of itself a miracle that we're able to to get out and and have interaction with uh, uh, through social media. But uh, but we're sure looking forward to seeing how Starlink performs. So and maybe not having to pay so much a month too. Yeah, yeah, I think it goes down to what a hundred a month, something like that, and then I can get rid of that absolute horrible satellite that's on the front of our house. So um, we, uh, we've we had to have the service tech out here a couple times uh, because we've lost um, signal. And he tried to tell me at one point in time that uh, the leaves on the maple tree <laughs> was obstructing the line of sight that the satellite had to have. And I informed him that the earth has shifted. <laughs> he didn't believe me. Um, Anyway, yeah. we're just, uh, this is one of those things. We check our water tank level on the internet. I check the batteries percentages on the internet. Um, you know, th there's some of these things that um, I have, we have to have the internet for. Um, our cell, cell phone carriers don't work, um, so we use the Wi-Fi. So anyhow, it's a pain. I got nothing good to say about 
either one of those, uh, uh, um, Viasat or um, HughesNet, but I don't think these companies have had any pressure to perform any better until something like Starlink has come along. And I would venture to say that Starlink will put uh, probably any other uh, satellite internet provider out of business uh, in the near future. So if it genuinely performs the way that people are saying that it does, which is 150 up and 150 down, that's insane because I would guess we're we're probably doing like three megs up, three megs. It takes four to five hours to upload a video. From a 20 minute video. A 20 minute video from uh, midnight to four in the morning, typically. So mm -hmm. anyway. Um, okay, let's keep on going on. This coming Sunday, hopefully things will get back to normal just a little bit. It's been a bit of a... Um, normal. Yeah, whatever normal uh, is. Normal. <laughs> um, I just purchased something for the off-grid cabin that I've been... Uh, trying to find for almost a year now and I am really excited to go get it and uh, and sh and show you guys what what in fact it is because I think it's perfect um so we'll, we'll get back to doing what we're doing I, I think I I uh, I need to get back on the shop I need to get uh the electrical finished up and get the inspection done but anyway the usual we'll see you guys on Sunday there's always something always something yep Yeah. <laughs>